Okay, right now we've got a Tacoma. We do these um, very often. And so what you've got here is your typical Tacoma kit. You've got your Tacoma bed bars. You've got your rear turnbuckles, your front turnbuckles, and your set of mats. There's three here. Also the plug. And this is wired, which is a two wire system. Tacomas don't need the rear tail lights and the running lights wired to them. So we just wire that right under the chassis to the hood. So here you can see the wire coming up, the double insulated wire that runs to the 30 amp resettable breaker. Then we run to your body ground on the Tacomas and then very simple, we just run right to your battery positive. As you can see, there's no need for us to hook into the computer of the car. It's just a very simple connection. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to load the camper onto the truck. Uh, we just did the install on this uh, vehicle for a customer and we're ready to load the new camper on it, so I'm going to show you how that's done. Um, it's not super difficult. Um, you definitely want to take your time and make sure the truck is lined up into the camper uh, as straight as possible. If you have a helper, you know, somebody in the back uh, to spot for you, it's a little bit easier. Uh, but one person can do it, and I'm going to show you how one person can do it, if you're careful. Um, so basically, like I said, just make sure the truck is aligned with the side of the camper, and just come back real slow. You'll, I'll get out and check, you know, two or three times to make sure that I'm coming in straight. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So when you get to this point, what I like to do is get out and just make sure that the sides are okay on both sides and then look underneath and make sure you have enough clearance underneath to, to miss the, the bed of the truck. So you're just gonna wanna look down the sides, make sure it's clear there and it's lined up here. So it's lined up in the perfect right now. I like to get out one more time before, just to make sure that the wing, because the wing on the camper is a little bit wider than the what goes into the bed of the truck. So you want to make sure your wing clearance is going to clear the back of the truck. So you want to make sure there's enough clearance on both sides there. One of the nice things about when it's on jacks also is, is that you can maneuver the camper a little bit if it's not perfectly aligned. Like right now, this one's off just a little bit. And all you have to do is just kind of kick over the jacks a little bit just to, to straighten it out. So I'm gonna do that now. Okay, so now I'm perfectly straight. You also want to stop about, you know, 12 to 18 inches away from the truck, this much space, so that you have room to plug it into the truck, plug the camper into the truck. Um, so I'm going to do that. It's just a three-prong Atwood trolling motor plug. It's really tight, especially new, so you wiggle it a bunch and make sure you're pushing really hard and wiggling. And then uh, just and to make sure that plug's nice and tight. This particular camper, it's a fleet going on a Tacoma, so it doesn't have running lights. Um, one way to test to make sure your plug connection's good, uh, you, you can't really do it on a fleet, but if it was a Hawk or a Granby and the camper had running lights, you could turn on the lights on the truck and the running lights on the camper would come on and that would tell you that the plug connection is good. So, but this one's nice and tight, so I know it's ready. Next thing I'm going to do is just back it up. Like I said, I got about you know, 18 inches to go, so I'll go back really slow just till the bumpers touch the front of the, the back of the cab here. So you want to go back nice and slow just till it touches. So I backed it up until the bumpers touched, you know, kind of gently. 
Uh, make sure you put your uh, emergency brake on the truck so it's nice and tight and it's not going to move as you're bringing it down and trying to center the camper. I'm still about, about three inches above the camper or above the truck, um, so I'm going to bring the jacks down now. Um, again, if you have a helper and you got two people, you can do front, then the back, then the front, then the back, and just kind of walk it down to the truck. With one person, um, same concept. You'll just bring, uh, typically what I do is I'll bring the, the driver front jack down a little bit, then do the passenger front jack a little bit, and just kind of wobble it down nice and slow. So I'm gonna do that now. Um, when you buy the camper, you get the drill adapter, comes with the, uh, with the camper, and then just any kind of cordless drill works fine. So just a little bit at a time, an inch or two. Um, so it's not such a drastic drop. So I'll, I drop that one and I'll do the other side now. And then just follow, the, follow it the same way with the back, just a little bit in the back. And then back to the front. And then I'll do the front on the uh, passenger side. Drop the back a little bit. And we'll run the jacks all the way up to the top. Slow it down when it gets right to the top because it'll catch sometimes and kind of get at you. So. Um, and then I'll do the other side. Okay, so the uh, camper's now down on the truck. Um, the next thing we like to do is just make sure th the Tacomas have Tacoma brackets so there's actually a a guide plate in there so that the camper you know doesn't have a lot of room to move but you still want to center it as best as possible um, typically you're just going to measure you know from the trim edge to the edge of the truck and just make sure that matches on both sides uh, same thing in the back just make sure the gap in the back matches so that the camper is as centered as possible um, and then the other thing we like to do is um, is if you have helpers it's easier but you know, you want to push in the back of the camper a couple of times just to make sure that those bumpers in the front of the camper are touching the truck. That way it's nice and tight and it won't wiggle. The other thing is really important is, is it's not super important. Some people do drive around with jacks on it, but we don't recommend it. Um, at this point, we would recommend customers taking the jacks off of the camper, storing them in their garage. Um, it's just, if you leave them on, it's, it's more risky for accidents, you know, in parking lots and stuff, people will park too close, hit your jack and damage the camper. So if you can take the jacks off, store them away in the garage and just put them on when you take the camper off the truck, it's, it's highly recommended. Um, I'm going to push on the back end a little bit and, um, and then we're ready to do put turnbuckles on the truck and uh, we'll go over that uh, on the inside. Okay, so we're, uh, we're ready to push it in, make sure it's nice and tight to the truck, so Jessica's gonna help me with that. You ready? Okay, so one, two, three. And uh, all that does is just make sure the, the camper bumpers are touching the truck and it's nice and tight to the camper. Uh, that way when we put the turnbuckles on, and I believe Jessica's gonna show you how to do turnbuckles on this one, um, and she'll tell you how, how it's done and stuff, but if it's nice and tight to the truck, when you put the turnbuckles on, it has less room to wiggle and it'll stay tight. So, okay. Okay, so now we are at the point where we do have the camper on the truck bed. It's time to do our turnbuckles. Uh, a note on the turnbuckles, just want to stress that you do want to check these within your, within your first 50 miles of loading your camper onto the truck bed. Um, I'm going to get into the front. I'm going to do the front turnbuckles and then I'll do the rear turnbuckles. I'm going to hook it onto the camper underside and then I'll hook the bottom onto the truck bed eye bolts and then I'm going to hand tighten it counterclockwise until it snugs up and then I'll use a screwdriver, get it in the center of my turnbuckle and I'm just going to do a quarter turn on that. 
That's all I need. And then I'm gonna do a test to see if I can loosen it. And if I can't, that's sufficient. And you're gonna wanna check these periodically um, as you're traveling from here to your destination. Um, there's really not, a ne it's not necessary to over tighten these. Um, you could strip them. And as you continue to tighten these, the sides are just gonna bow out. So we really wanna stress that. You wanna make sure these are tight, that there's no wiggle in them, and that you can't loosen them. And that should be sufficient.